I want to bring your attention to Philip Tomasino, a guy with some great offensive abilities and a fantastic two-way game playing for the Niagara Ice Dogs in the OHL. He's a July birthday who's eligible for the Vancouver Draft this year, and he's a guy who's had a lot of people's attention over the past few weeks. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that, why that is, and the extent of this Tomasino hype. You remember how Barrett Hayton was a huge, absolutely huge riser in last year's NHL entry draft? I believe Tomasino is a guy who could definitely kind of pull off the same thing. I'm not suggesting that he'll go fifth overall to the Los Angeles Kings, but Tomasino is a guy who, in his draft year, certainly finished with a good amount of points and a great stock of numbers over here, 72 points in 67 games played, but Tomasino is a guy who, in my opinion, is a riser because of everything that he's done so far. He started out this season kind of in the doghouse. And doghouse is kind of a negative term, I know that, but he was really sheltered and he wasn't getting all that much playing time because Niagara is quite stacked and because there were a lot of great players out there on the lineup in front of him. Tomasino started off this 2018-19 OHL season with 8 points in 16 games. He was half a point a game for the first 16, so finishing up the rest of the season, he got himself in 51 games played, 64 points, which is a much better points per game than what he ended up with, with his 72 points in 67. So Tomasino really did get himself a great draft year. He was over a point a game, over a point a game and a bit if you take out those first few games, and he's ranked probably in the mid-20s. Some have him at the late teens, but overall, Tomasino is a guy who a lot of people are kind of attributing as an undervalued and an underrated pick, which is kind of why I'm trying to bring this up here, whether or not the Barrett Hayden comparison is making sense in a way. Because Barrett Hayden in his draft year was behind Morgan Frost. Frost was fantastic, he's still really, really good, and Barrett Hayden had to play his draft year behind Frost. As a result, Barrett Hayden's draft year wasn't super special in comparison to some of the other OHL guys that we've been seeing in the past. Hayden was under a point per game finishing off his draft year, and a lot of people were really surprised to see that his stock was so high despite the fact and that he went top five, which is kind of why this is kind of putting things into perspective too. Because Tomasino playing for the Niagara Ice Dogs this season, he was playing on a pretty stacked team, and he was behind guys like Ben Jones, Akil Thomas, Kirill Maximov. These guys were all ahead of him on the depth chart, and Jason Robertson too. So here is a guy who's ranked to go in the second half of the first round, and whose numbers were really good towards the end of the season, and who was playing in a limited role with second power play time, middle six ice time in general on 5v5, and who didn't necessarily have the best draft year that he could have because he wasn't played to the best of his ability. This is a guy who, in my opinion, could certainly rise up, and honestly, I think he's not too far off from being considered one of the better centermen of this draft. Tomasino, for me personally, I'd have him over Ryan Suzuki, I'd have him over Connor McMichael, I'd put him just underneath, maybe even with the guys like Doc, Cousins, and Segras. And that's kind of crazy, that's so highly up there, but I'm not the only one who shares this opinion too. Check out Ben Brown on Twitter, this is a guy, he's a great follow over there on Twitter, he works for the OHL Collective and Puck Authority 1. Philip Tomasino was an unbelievably skilled player who didn't produce big numbers because he was playing in a limited role. He has improved so much throughout the season, and I wouldn't be shocked to see him in the top 10 on draft day. Tomasino being a highly touted player, being in the top 15 seems like a little bit of a reach, being in the top 10 seems like an even bigger reach. But it happened with Barrett Hayden last year. So... Take all your logic and all your reasoning and throw that out the window. Suspend your disbelief over here because things like this do happen, especially with two-way centers like Hayden, like Tomasino. Tomasino was really offensively skilled, and his mind for the game is really 
highly developed. He's really smart, he's a great two-way guy, but on top of that, his offensive instincts and capabilities shine above all. His shot and his passing ability are both really great, and he's able to do some really creative and dominant things in the offensive zone. Whether that's one-on-one -on -one battles with guys that he usually wins because his puck skills and his skating are both really good, or setting things up on a really deceptive pass over to an open teammate in front, Tomasino is a really complete offensive powerhouse who can do a strong two-way game as well. Which is kind of why he's in this light that some people, like Ben, like myself, are saying that he can be a really big riser. I see him as a better player than Suzuki, and I see him as better than McMichael. I see him as the best OHL player in this draft. Yeah, even compared to Kaliev. And that's just strictly speaking on their status as a player in their entirety, because Kaliev, I'd say that Kaliev is the better goal scorer, but I wouldn't say that he's the better player overall than Tomasino. But Tomasino is a guy who I certainly don't have an answer to. I certainly believe that no matter where he goes, he's got top six borderline elite potential, a guy who could probably play a first-line role as a center on a pretty bad team, but a guy who's a solid second-line center on any of the top half teams in the NHL. That's probably where I see his ceiling, and the likelihood of him reaching that ceiling is probably maybe a 6, 7 out of 10, but in my opinion, he's a guy who, if you draft in the mid-20s, you're getting a really amazing player. Like Ty Delandria last year, too, we saw Delandria jump up a whole bunch of spots. He went in the early teens to Dallas when he was supposed to go much later. At least for Barrett Hayden, we already knew because Craig Button kind of said that he was a top seven pick on his mock draft, but Hayden wasn't supposed to go five. People weren't expecting that at all. So, for me to sit here a year later and for me to take a look at this OHL two way center who's got some really good offensive capabilities. I can't sit back here and say with certainty that he's going to be available after 20. I wouldn't be surprised if he went in the mid-teens, and I would be very surprised personally if he went top 10, but it's kind of crazy because I understand it. Teams love centers, and teams love two-way guys, and teams love work-oriented center two-way guys, so Tomasino could be a really huge riser in this draft. And if he goes somewhere in the top 12, at me right here, I called it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Socially, that's Rosa Sang Gaming, and bye.